coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next SDL 2.0 tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be learning about creating threads. Now this one I was sort of reluctant to teach mainly because um, a lot of people get excited when they hear about threads and multi-threading and so on and so forth when in reality um, they shouldn't be using it and the reason why is because um, yes using utilizing multiple uh, threads and being able to run multiple things at once can be a benefit um, if you know what you're doing if you don't know what you're doing it's sort of like playing with fire you're gonna get burnt and uh, so if you do not know uh, about threading and you don't know how to handle threading and you don't um, know exactly what you're doing but you're excited about using uh, multiple threads in order to run multiple things at once um, in a game or an application uh, then feel free to do some searches on Google now to help you get started uh, the general rule is if you don't know what cache coherency is what cache alignment is how operating systems handle threads and processes or how to use a profiler uh, if you don't know any of those topics or you don't know all those p topics, uh, look into it. And once you sort of understand that, then you can sort of delve into multi-threading. But for those of you who, despite what I say, just want to do it or you already know what those stuff is and you just want to know how to do it SDL, I'm going to show you uh, the basics on how to get a thread running. And if you want to learn more on how to do more with threads, there's always Google. But let's get started. So we're going to include SDL underscore thread. And uh, we're going to make a function for our thread to run in. So uh, our, our function has to have a distinct signature, um, sort of like a callback function. And uh, we're going to... Uh, we're going to call this thread function and it requires that we have a void uh, pointer parameter and we're just going to say thread data and we're just going to say thread number and we're going to print out the threads number so we're going to pass in an integer in that void pointer and then we're going to um, we're gonna actually display it. So uh, this is our function signature. So when we pass it in um, into our uh, into our thread, it we can actually execute this function. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say SDL thread. Uh, we'll call it test thread is equal to SDL create thread, and uh, it takes a sorry if you can see this here it takes our function pointer so it takes our thread function it takes the name this is which is used for uh, debugging purposes so say test thread and our data that we're going to pass into it so we'll just make it int uh, data just give the value 10 and then we'll say void and we'll pass in our data like so and voila, we have um, we have our thread. Uh, so what we're going to do at the bottom, um, we destroy before we destroy everything. We're going to say wait SDL wait thread, and uh, we're going to set in our, our our ID. And for the status, we're just going to put a null. And what this is going to do is that if you uh, were to close your application. Um, if you were to close your application while we you're executing the thread, uh, then it will wait until the thread is done executing, and then it will close everything. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this thread and put it right before here, because when we say SDL create thread, that's when it's actually going to start creating and running the thread. So we want to actually start running it and stuff after everything's initialized. Uh, so let's run this and we have um, an error and we need to return a value um, so let's just uh, sorry about that let's just return zero and let's run this so it ran the thread it run, ran it simultaneously while we were running this program so um, what 
in, in that in that last ex last example, you didn't really get to see how threads really um, are executed. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna make a for loop, and I'm just gonna say, uh, let's just say a thousand times, and we're just gonna execute this a thousand times. Now, normally, if we were to have say this for loop in our game loop, and we were to run it, then nothing would really update until um, that loop was finished. I had finished executing uh, but now while this is executing right there we're running it side by side oh it did that really quickly um, just put 10,000 there and while that's executing we're still able to execute our, our game so we can process things in the background so whether um, if you want to use this for like when you reach a save point in the game you save something in the background or something or load a file in the background while something else is executing or so on and so forth then yeah using a thread is fine it, it's fine for using in simple instances like that um, especially for intermediate programmers but once you get into really sophisticated stuff like when you want to use say threads with uh, networking and so on and so forth then uh, more knowledge um, uh, then it requires more knowledge so again uh this will wait until the thread is done executing so um and if you want to you can say kill thread i think it's kill thread i guess not i guess they removed it in sdo 2.0 so i don't know what the equivalent to that is but um you can search that up if you want uh but anyways i i guess it might just kill it or free it automatically maybe it's like SDL destroy thread mm, or free thread not exactly sure what they've uh, what they've done for that to be honest but um, it's up to you guys if you guys are really interested to search that one up but that's how you execute threads um, in SDL so just to recap we have our um, function the signature has to look like that with the integer the name and as a, a void pointer parameter execute whatever you want and then when you want to run the thread you create the thread and then you run it in here and the data you pass into is the data that we pass into here and this is for debugging purposes and then when you want to, when you finish executing your program we say wait for our thread uh, so that it, it waits until it's done executing before it closes the program so that's it for this tutorial don't forget to comment rate and subscribe also don't forget to like my page on facebook and follow me on twitter as well as sign up on my website so that's it and bye for now